He's swimming towards. So really, in that movie, God didn't do anything. So it's not really a good movie if you want to watch it. But we went to watch it yesterday. I was very disappointed. Because God is not like that. God made him walk on dry land. Amen? This year is over. Amen to that? Just about. It's almost over. Next Sunday is the last Sunday of the year. Amen? And 2014 is gone. 2014 is gone. 2015 is coming. And you know what 2015 means? Number 15? You know what that means? It means rest. So we're going to go into the year of rest. Praise God for that. We're going to a year of rest, of blessings of God. Pastor has been preaching about blessings. The blessings of the Lord. So that means we're going into God's blessings. Resting is a blessing from God. Resting from whatever you've been through, it's a blessing from God. See, I never, I never understood. This is not part of the message. This is something I wanted to bring up to you. I never understood why preacher always, always blessed the coming year. And I started understanding it when I really became a Christian. When you really get into the word of God. Because if you declare for the next year what's going to happen. That's actually what's going to happen to you next year. I have declared over my household prosperity. Blessings from God. And whatever the pastor has touched about blessings. I have declared that over my, so my household. I even, I even send a uh, verse of the Bible to be made by my dad. Especially for me. In wood. And it goes this way. It says, My God shall supply all of your needs according to His poorness and glory. What does it say? According to His riches and glory. And I'm waiting for that verse to come. Because that's what I'm declaring this year for my house. I don't know what you're declaring this year for your house. But I declare blessings over your household this year. Amen. Just a little something so you can study at home. 15 means rest. I'm going to try to preach a message that I try to preach Sunday morning when the Holy Ghost moved. And that is going after the mantle. How many of you want to go after the mantle? And going after the mantle takes all of you. All of you to go after the mantle. You cannot follow it just with your mind. You have to follow it with your mind, your soul, and your body to go after the mantle. First Kings 19, 19, 21 says, So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plotting with 12 yokes of oxen before him and he was with the 12 then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him and left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said please let me kiss my father and my mother then I will follow you and he said to him go back again for what I have done to you so Elijah turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen equipment and gave it to the people and they ate then he rose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Then go to 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 5 through, 14, through 15. It says, Now the son of the prophets who were in Jericho came to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, Oh, as the Lord lives, as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of the men went. And fifty men and fifty men of the sons of the prophet went and stood facing at the distance while they two of them stood at the Jordan. 
Now Elijah threw his mantle, he said, rolled up and struck the waters, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. The New Living Translation and, the, and that verse says, Then Elijah folded his clothes together and struck the water with it. The river divided in two and went across on dry water. I want to bring that up because I'm going to touch that in a little bit. Let's keep going. It says, and so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elijah, Ask what may I do for you before I take, I'm taken away from you. Elijah said, Please let the double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me whom I taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it should not be so. Then it happened as they continued in the, in talk, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses on fire and separated the two of them. And, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah said, saw it and cried out, My father, my father, chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more and took a hold of his own cloth and tore them in two pieces. And he also took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood into the bank of the, of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah then that had fell from him and struck the waters. And he said, Where is the God of Elijah? And he also had struck the waters. It was divided this way and that, and Elijah crossed over. Now when the sons of the prophets were from, who were in Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elijah. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Say, God uses ordinary men to do extraordinary things. Ain't that true? God uses ordinary men to do extraordinary things. Elijah was a simple farmer. And like I was telling you that Sunday, I'm going to touch a little bit what I was teaching that Sunday. Have you ever seen a farmer that is very nice and clean? Only the owners of the farmers are nice and clean. But a real farmer, he's always dirty. And this is what Elijah was doing. He was going about his day. He was doing whatever he did every single day. And he thought that this day would be the same day as tomorrow. The same day as yesterday. And nothing's going to happen today. Everything's going to be the same. You know, sometimes we don't have any expectations in life. But what's going to happen in the supernatural? We, put, we wake up every morning. And we think, well, thank you, Lord, for what you, what you did yesterday. And we thank you, Lord, for today. But we never think that God is going to do a miraculous thing today for me. God is going to do something wonderful for me. And Elijah was, had the type of mentality. You know, he was going about his day. But something was coming his way. Something was coming his way. And this is what I want, I want, I want to show you. Elijah comes by and he's working. He's working. He doesn't even turn around. And all Elijah does, he just throws what? His mantle over him. Listen to this. When he threw his mantle over Elijah, it was the prophetic mantle that he had making him a calling from God. To succeed him in being a prophet. Now, have you noticed something? Notice this in the Bible. There were companies of prophets in the Bible. The Bible teaches that. That we don't hear about. But we hear about Elijah. An extraordinary, a, an ordinary man. 
that was doing extraordinary things for God. By his word, by his command, God did. He moved. So here he comes. He throws the mantle. And immediately, he recognized who it is. And that God is making him a call. How many of you have been called by God? To do extraordinary things. And not to be sitting down in a, in a chair. But to be doing extraordinary things. We all been called to do things like that. God says, you, ha you have to pray for the sick. You pray for the sick and they what? They will get sicker. Does it say that? No. It says that you pray for the sick and they will heal. So that's my calling. That's your calling. That's your mantle. And in my mantle, listen to this. He wasn't just putting the mantle of a prophetic mantle upon him. But as soon as he threw the rope upon him, authority followed with it. Authority followed with it. So the mantle that you have is put on you, not by pastor. It's put on you by Jesus Christ himself. So when that mantle is put on, on you, you have power and you have authority against every sickness, against every power in hell that wants to raise up against your household. Touch your economy. You have the power to reject that. Because you have the mantle. Now, he comes and throws the mantle, a prophetic mantle upon him. And something happened to Elijah that day. Something that was asleep suddenly woke up on him. A desire, a hunger for God, a desperate desire to know who God was. How many of you have awakened that desire for God? To know who He is. To be with Him at three in the morning, two in the morning, one in the morning. A desire for God. When the Holy Ghost calls me, I'm there because my desire is alive. That's what happened to Elijah. His desire was dead. He, it, was, it was a normal day for him. But once the prophet came to him and threw the mantle, his desire woke up. And he said, you know what? I'm tired of sitting down. I'm tired of doing the same thing. I'm tired of every morning waking up, going to work, not, doing, not having an impact in my community. Listen to me. It's time for you to make an impact in your community. God has called you. Be a porter of his glory. And that's the mantle that you're carrying. So Elijah just went and threw the mantle over him. And there was a spiritual awakening inside of him. A desire for God. God's glory. A desire for for the supernatural of God. See, once it's amazing. Once you have seen what the Holy Ghost can do, your hunger is for more. And your thirsty is for more. God says, if you're thirsty, come, come. Come where? Come to the waters. Come to the waters. That means if I'm thirsty. And I want more for God. I'm going to sit and pray. I'm going to pray more because he, He's going to reveal me more and more and more. See, one thing about the Holy Ghost is that when you go in deep with Him, He goes in deep with you. He goes deep in the waters with you. And the more revelation that you get, the more understanding of what God is you get in your life. The more under understanding you get of God is in your life, the more you get to know who God is with you. Or in you. You have a power for God. But sometimes we're walking like we don't have a mantle. And we don't have a power for God.
Brother, I'm sick. Pray for me. Oil. Anoint yourself. It's good that you pray, that you tell people to pray. That's good. I'm telling you, I'm not telling you not to do it. But you have the authority and you have the power that is given to you to pray for yourself and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. The hunger for God's glory, we should not only have it just for one hour or two hours. We should have it through the whole day, 24-7. The hunger for God's glory. When the mantle fell on him, something was stirring up in his stomach. Stirring means causing a great excitement or strong emotion. It means God's glory fell on him and he was not the same. His destiny was changed completely. His destiny was completely changed. He wasn't the same. He was a different man. If you notice, one thing he did, he said, the mantle fell on me, and I'm going to follow the prophet. I'm going to follow the mantle. I'm going to give you a king. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a king. If you know somebody that is living on the supernatural, that believes the supernatural, Follow his mantle. Pastor believes in the supernatural. I believe in the supernatural. It's a mantle. And the church has to go under that mantle. Believing in the supernatural. I believe that <clears throat> people can get healed while we're preaching, while we're singing. I have heard testimonies. This morning they gave me a testimony of what happened. Last Sunday when the Holy Ghost moved here. The lady that we prayed for that had um, diabetes. There was no control on her sugar. And we prayed for the Holy Ghost to stabilize it. Make it stable. And since we pray on, it has been stable. That's our God. That's our God. By the command of your you have power and you have authority. Stirring up. Have you ever felt something warm in your belly? How many of you have? And that something is about to happen. You don't understand it. You cannot comprehend it. Your mind cannot grasp, grasp it. But something is about to happen. And you start feeling warm in your belly. And then all your body starts to sweat. And you're thinking, man, I'm going to menopause? Or what's going on with me? Let me tell you what happens to me when I know that the Holy Ghost is going to do something glorious and something, and it's going to move. Let me tell you what happens. I get warm in my belly. My hands start sweating. When my hands start sweating, that means something is going to come out. And the Holy Ghost is going to give something to people. Then my leg starts to shake. My body starts to shake. You don't see it, but I'm shaking. That time in the morning, I was shaking on the chair. And I knew the Holy Ghost was going to do something. See, there's a fire that is in you, that is in me. That when that gets stirred up, boy, the devil's better run. 
the devil's better run. Because you come with more power than what you had before. With more authority. And something stirs up inside of you. That burns you. Second Timothy 1.6 says, Therefore, I put thee in remembrance that you what? Stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting laying of hands. Stir up the gifts of God that are on you. What gifts have God given you? What? What are the gifts that God has given you? Jeremiah 29 says, See, there's something. I'll read it right now. There's something about the fire of God that you cannot contain. How many of you have tried to contain the fire of God? You can't. It's hard to contain it. And here's Jeremiah fighting with God. And he says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more of his name. But his word in my heart as a burning fire shut up my bones in my bones. And it was weary, was fervoring, but I could not stay. See, when your spirit is stirred inside, and the Holy Ghost is talking in you, and is and is moving in you, and is touching you, and is grabbing you. And he's giving you words to say to somebody. And you're like a bomb that is ready to explode. And if you don't say it, you're going to explode. I've been there. I went with a preacher, and I told you this once already, I think. I went with a preacher down to, to uh, Las Vegas. I have no idea why I went with him. But I, he, he just called me up. He told me, you know what? I need you to go with me. Um, just a trip. Um, just go with me and then we'll come back. I go like, okay, we'll go. So I went with this preacher. And I was sitting in the, in the chair. I was shaking. He had, the, the service hadn't even started yet. I was shaking on the chair. And the Holy Ghost is telling me, you're going to get up and you're going to say this. 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 And I said, no, nope, I'm not going to do that because I'm not the preacher. He said, well, you're not the preacher, but you're, they're going to call you to the front. And you're going to say that. He said, no, nope, I'm not going to do that. That's me finding with the Holy Ghost as Jeremiah was. But there was a fire in me that was burning me. And I was going to explode. So as soon as the preacher gets the microphone, he said, I said, glory to God, he's just going to start preaching. And he said, well, there's a pastor with me that's coming from Oregon, and I want him to say some words. Here we go. And I'm fighting with the Lord, and I tell him, Lord, I'm just going to say my name, and I'm going to sit down. Holy Ghost said, no, you're going to say what I told you to say. I said, no, I'm just going to say my name. Here I go to the front. As soon as I grabbed the microphone, I said, and this is what the Lord says. There was something that was burning in me. That if I don't let it out, it will burn me. See, that hunger for God. That hunger for God. Is going to wake up your spiritual senses. And that's what happened to Elijah. It woke up his spiritual senses. Now. When the mentality of God is in you, listen to me. When the mentality of God is in you, that means you're dead. I'll explain it. The Bible says that we're supposed to die, crucify our flesh every day. And how you crucify your flesh? A lot of people get their whips and a lot of 
pathogens and they start hitting each other, hitting their, their bodies. And for them, that's crucifying their flesh. Catholics do that. But God says, crucify your flesh. How? By fasting, praying, seeking his face. I'm crucifying my flesh for God. And the more I die, the more me, myself, and Irene dies, God lives in me. His mentality is in me. So what I think is what he thinks. You getting what I'm saying? The more I die, I think more like God. And if I die more, I think more like God. Because when I die, I learn how to live in the supernatural. And I live more in the supernatural. I love living in the supernatural. Because in the supernatural, you can declare the word and the word becomes real in the natural. And that's what Elijah learned. See, he had a good mentor. Another thing that happened to Elijah was this. Elijah asked him, what do you want me to give you when I leave you? What did he say? I want your house, your horses, your money. If, if it was you or me, we would have asked for all of that. He said, no. I see how you live in the supernatural. I want the double portion. If you're powerful, I want to be more powerful than you. There's a saying that says that the, the student surpasses the teacher. And he was Elijah's student. First, listen to this carefully. He got the prophetic mantle over him. But now he has the double portion of the spirit of Elijah on him. So that means he has double the authority and the anointing. And it's powerful. This is what's powerful. When you listen to a man and a woman of God and you acquire of their knowledge of what they know. I like listening to pastor. I learned a lot from pastor. His words are anointing. They are anointed. I learned a lot from him. You're not a follower. Anybody follow somebody that will teach you how to live in the supernatural. Don't just follow anybody and go under their mantle, their supernatural mantle. Elijah said this. Okay, he parted the waters. And the Bible says that he walked in dry land. Not on wetland, on dry land. When he walked on dry land, Elijah said, I want to do what he did. So he grabbed his mantle and he said, You know what? Where is the God of Elijah? And he struck the waters. And the waters never opened, they stayed closed. Is that what they say? it says? It says the same thing. That the water opened. And he went through it. See, receiving the double portion in the, in the supernatural. It 
means that when you speak the word, it becomes a reality. How many of you have spoken the word and have seen results? I have seen results. See, God's glory, it's on us, and His fire is in us. We live in God's kingdom, and His glory is in His kingdom. We need to understand that I have the mantle of God's glory in my life so I have the double portion that means when I pray the spirit of depression leaves when I pray cancer dries up when I pray arthritis dies when I pray every skin disease goes away because I have the power and the authority from God. When the garment of His glory falls upon you, something happens in your body that your flesh cannot contain it. Cannot contain it. Because it's flesh. It's flesh. See, He folded he folded it together. He folded it together. Just imagine God's power. Twice. I would love to see that in the supernatural. Whatever demon is attacking your life, and I'm going to close with this. Whatever mentality the devil wants to bring in your mind, make you a mindset Maybe you're having a battle in your mind that you don't know about. God wants to set you free for that. And he's telling you, you have the power and you have the authority to do it. He wants to set you free. That's what he wants to do. And mostly in this state, this is the state that is considered a very depressive state. Nationwide, this state is considered depressive. But God, if the devil's trying to put that in you, God can take that away tonight. Please stand. Whatever healing you need, God can do it today. Whatever sickness the devil has brought to your body, God can make it go away today. I'm going to ask, if you're sick, If you're sick, I'm going to ask you to come to the front. I want to pray for you. 